In this third lesson on trig equations, we're going to have a look at equations that require factorization. In lesson one on trig equations, we learned that it is always your main aim or first step to get your trig equation into the standard form, meaning a trig function angle equal to a constant ratio. When you have it in this form, you can follow the normal steps. However, sometimes you need a bit of manipulation before you can get the equation into the standard form. We are going to have a look at three different types, and today we are starting off with type 1, where we have two or more terms that have trig functions in them. So let's have a look at example 1. Determine the general solution, and here, as I mentioned, you need to realize that we now have two terms, and both of them have trig functions in them, and therefore we can't start off immediately with our trig function angle equal to a constant ratio. In this case, we are going to have to factorize. You already know quite a few methods of factorizing. Common factor, difference between squares, trinomial, grouping, and you will have to take all of them into account when factorizing. In this case, we have two terms, but to factorize, we need to start off getting everything to one side equal to zero. In my two terms on my left, I now have sin theta in both of them, and that is then my common factor that I will take out. When I take out a common factor, I actually divide by that common factor, and I'll be left in the first term with 2 sin theta, and in my second term with minus 1. The whole point of factorizing in equations is to get the equation in the form a times b is equal to zero, because then we know either one of the factors a or b can be equal to zero to make this equation true. And now we have that exact form. We have a times b is equal to zero, and therefore we can break it up into the first factor, which in our case is sine theta can be zero, or b, which we have as two sine theta minus one, can be equal to zero. And in my second equation, I can now get sin theta alone by adding one on the right and then dividing by two. And now we've managed to get two equations into our standard form of trig function, angle equal to a constant ratio. And now for both of these equations, we can follow the normal steps. So our next step is to calculate the reference angle. And now we can continue to determining the quadrants. So for the first equation, we're going to work where sin is equal to zero. So we'll work in the positive quadrants for sin, which is our first and our second quadrant. For the second equation, we'll work where sin is equal to a half, and that's again our positive quadrants. Our next step is to add our reduction formulas. Our first quadrant does not need a reduction formula. And then for our second quadrant, the reduction formula is 180 degrees minus our reference angle. And our last step is to simplify, and we only have one equation to simplify here. And that means in the end we have four different general solutions. Example 2. Determine the general solution and here once again we have more than two terms and two of them have a trig function so we would want to factorize. But to do that we first need to get all the terms on one side so we need to move that one to the left hand side. Here we now have a trinomial that we need to factorize. When factorizing trinomials, it helps if you rewrite it in rough work in terms of normal algebra. So I'm going to change the cos thetas into x. And that means we'll have 3x squared plus 2x minus 1, which is now a trinomial I can factorize. When I factorize trinomials, we focus on x squares coefficient and the constant, and we use them to break it up into our two brackets. And in this case, that will be 3x minus 1, x plus 1. I'm reminding you that you can always quickly check your factorization. Multiplying the closest to will give us minus 1x. Furthest to is plus 3x. And when you add these two up, you need to get your middle term, which in this case is plus 2x. 
So to rewrite this back in terms of trigonometry, I will have 3 cos theta minus 1 and cos theta plus 1. And now once again we have our form A times B equals to 0. So we can break it up into A, in our case 3 cos theta minus 1 can be 0, or B cos theta plus 1 can be 0. Now we can get both of these equations into our standard form. And then we can follow our normal steps starting off getting our reference angle. And here I'm reminding you that you ignore the sign of the constant ratio when you calculate the reference angle. And next up we determine our quadrant. So for cos theta equal to a third, we work in the first and the fourth quadrants where cos is positive. And for cos theta equal to minus one, the second and third quadrant where cos is negative. And then one by one we go and add our reduction formulas and then simplify. And here we then have three general solutions. Example three, determine the general solution and here once again we have a trinomial. If I start off by rewriting this in terms of algebra, I will have a cos Anderson, which will be something like 2x squared minus y minus 1. And this cannot be factorized. So I will have to start off with trig manipulation to get both these trig functions to be the same type of function. In grade 10, you learnt the identity cos squared theta plus sin squared theta is 1. And we're going to use it to change the cos squared into 1 minus sin squared theta. So my first step will be to substitute the cos squared theta with 1 minus sin squared theta. And once you've then simplified, you will see that we do now have a trinomial that can be factorized. The trinomial can be factorized into 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. And when I now rewrite this back in terms of trig, I will have 2 sin theta minus 1 times sin theta plus 1. And once again, we have the form A times B is equal to 0. So I can break it up into my two equations. Next, I get them both into the standard form. Calculate the reference angle. Split it up into the correct quadrants. Add the correct reduction formulas and simplify. 